Hi everyone. I am Inyun and today I'll be talking about a product that we just launched called Superbase Edge Functions and how we designed it to be fast, secure and scalable. A bit about myself. I am a senior software engineer at Superbase. I love anything related to performance, security and chocolates. You can find me online at Twitter at ever confused guy so before we jump in a bit about what superbase is superbase is the open source firebase alternative when you sign up to superbase you get a full fledged postgres database which is one of the most trusted and reliable databases in the world it's been battle tested for a really long time and superbase gives you a full postgres database along with uh, real time capabilities real time makes it really easy to listen to changes happening over on your database with web sockets and recently we also add some features related to presence and broadcasting messages which makes it easy to build real time applications like a chat or a stock ticker and so on Our next product Auth makes it really easy to add signups and logins to your application and we support more than 15 different Auth providers at this point which you can integrate into your application with just a few lines of code and the best part about this is that you can write your authentication policies with just SQL using row level security policies of Postgres Storage lets you store and organize any file including videos and images just last year in devxconf i talked about how we launched storage and the various design considerations that went into it today i'll be talking about superbase edge functions superbase edge functions let you write arbitrary business logic and it gets deployed globally in a matter of seconds and your functions are scaled automatically based on demand so you don't need to worry about provisioning resources or managing servers all of that is managed by superbase so before we go into how functions are implemented these are a few different use cases why we decided to implement functions it makes it really easy to handle sensitive operations like sending emails or integrating with different third party payment providers like stripe anywhere where you need a secure context and something that you can't directly do from the client side functions are great for that it also makes it really easy to integrate with third party apis and even implementing a custom api for your own mobile application or website because you don't need to worry about managing servers you just focus on implementing your api and superbase handles the rest we decided to use tino as the runtime for superbase edge functions and one of the main reasons why we decided to do that was because tino had a completely open source runtime Superbase is an open source company and it was very important to us that we use a runtime that's also open source for functions. Choosing an open source runtime also makes it easy to integrate with our existing tool chain and allowing developers to run Dino functions locally is also very important for providing a good developer experience while you're authoring your functions. This means that you can test your function completely locally before actually deploying it leading to faster iteration times while you are writing superbase functions it also helps with portability because the runtime is open source you can just take superbase functions and decide to host it yourself on your own cloud provider or with a different platform that supports dino i also like the fact that dino uses open standards for its apis when possible for example it uses the ES module specification for doing package resolution and it uses web crypto api for all its cryptographic operations the other thing that i love about dino is that it's a batteries included platform 
if you have ever set up a Node.js project from scratch before, you know that you need to do quite a lot of work before even you can start writing a single line of code. Uh, you probably need to set up linter like ESLint, you need to set up a bundler like Webpack, and you need to make sure that it's able to process TypeScript files, you need a formatter like Prettier and so on. The cool thing about Dino is that it comes with all of these things out of the box. You get a linter, a bundler, a formatter, a test runner, and you also get some pretty advanced tools like a benchmarking tool and a documentation generator, which are pretty handy for any project out there. The other area where Dino differentiates itself from Node is its permission and security model. Node and the NPM package manager have come up under a lot of supply chain attacks recently and Dino helps mitigate some of that risk by having a secure by default permission model. A Dino script cannot access the file system, environment variables or the network unless you give access to each of those things and you can configure permissions for all of those systems on a pretty granular level. The other decision that we had to make was choosing where to deploy your functions. The advantage of deploying your functions globally is that it's closer to your users. Most applications are global from day one and making sure that your functions are deployed all around the world leads to faster request times because they are closer to your users. However, there is a disadvantage with this model with certain kinds of workloads. If your function is reading and writing data to your database quite a lot, and if the function is located far away from your database, this can lead to slower execution time rather than just deploying fun the function close to your database. And the main workaround we have for this is to offer database functions so you can already use Postgres functions and the Postgres function obviously runs on your database and Postgres provides a nice API to invoke Postgres functions, which you can invoke it directly or through your client library. We also launched PG GraphQL recently, which is just a Postgres extension and exposes a GraphQL API on top of your database. Both of these are great for if your function is reading and writing a lot of data, you can use both of these tools from your function to make sure you get the best of both worlds because the function runs closer to your user and all the data intensive operations happens closer to the database, either via Postgres or PG GraphQL. The final decision that we had to make was whether to offer container as a service or functions as a service. Containers as a service do have some advantages because they can usually run a larger variety of workloads. They also usually have larger execution timeouts and they run in a single centralized location. We ultimately decided to go with functions as a service because functions usually start up faster because their runtime is usually lighter than containers. They can be invoked even asynchronously. They do have shorter execution timeouts, but they can scale much better than container based runtimes. And also it's lesser things for the developers to reason about and they can just focus on business logic when writing functions because they don't need to worry about how to build their Docker images, how to keep system dependencies up to date and so on, which is why we finally decided to go with functions as a service. And with all of this in place, we decided to go with Dino Deploy as the platform to deploy Superbase functions. Dino Deploy is the hosted platform offered by Dino and it runs in 29 different regions all around the world. It scales up and down pretty seamlessly. It can scale all the way down to zero, which means that you are only paying for what you use and it has a zero millisecond startup time and deployments are blazingly fast. You can deploy a new function 
to all their data centers in just a matter of seconds. And it's also open source first, which means that any new feature or API hits the Dino language first. And then in a matter of a week or two, it hits the Dino deploy platform. Now let's see a few examples of what a Superbase function looks like. You can import third party modules directly with URLs as you would do in ECMAScript modules. And here I'm importing a standard SMTP client. I'm getting the hostname, port, username, password from the environment variables. And so when you launch a new Superbase function, you can specify this environment variable so that you don't hard code secrets into the function itself. You connect to the SMTP server and you can just send emails, which is a pretty standard use case for using functions. And as with anything that we build, Superbase functions integrates with the rest of the Superbase stack pretty well. So when a user logs in to Superbase auth, they get back a JWT, and this JWT can then be used to invoke a Superbase function. So the function is invoked if the JWT is valid, and if the function uses the same JWT, it can also access the rest of the Superbase services, which is pretty nice because the permissions are mapped over when accessing the rest of the Superbase stack. So if the function is trying to upload an object to storage, that API call will only succeed if the user invoking the function has the necessary permissions to upload an object to storage via row level security policies. And to make it easier to access the rest of the Superbase services, we inject these secrets as environment variables whenever you launch a Superbase function. So it becomes pretty easy to interact with the rest of the stack. So let's see how <clears throat> our function would look like if you just want to run a query against your Superbase database. Dino comes with a native Postgres driver. So this is incredibly simple. As I mentioned before, the Superbase database URL is injected as an environment variable. So you can get the database URL from that. And you can also use PG Bouncer, which comes with every standard post Superbase project. Since you're executing this code from a serverless context, it probably is better to use a pooler like PG Bouncer. You can connect to the database and execute any query, which uh, is super easy because of the native drivers that Dino provides for Postgres. You can, of course, also use our REST API or GraphQL API to do sort of the same thing if you do not want to connect to the database directly. And as I mentioned before, using uh, the same JWT or the Superbase service key or anon key, you can interact with Superbase storage. So for example, this function implements its own authorization layer on top of what you get from Superbase storage, and it only downloads an object if it gets the proper authorization header from the client. This is how the authoring and deployment process of a Superbase function looks like. The code is on the right and you can run the function locally using the CLI. So you say Superbase functions serve and the name of the function. And once it's started up, you can make requests to the function either through the client library or through a simple curl command as shown here. And you can see it prints out hello world. And say if you want to change the function from saying hello world to hello world from Dino, you save the function. And as soon as you save the function, the program is incrementally compiled and the server is restarted. And when you make a request to the new function again, it says hello world from Dino. So you can see that you can develop and invoke the function completely locally without ever deploying, which makes for a pretty nice developer experience. So after you deploy the function, this is what the dashboard will look like. You can see the logs from each invocation in the dashboard, and you can also filter by different severity levels so that you only see error logs from your function, for example. And after that, you can also see 
how long the function took to run, the different invocations, the status codes, uh, the time of invocation and so on in the dashboard as well. If you do not want to use a call request to invoke your function, we have written a simple client library to make that easier as well. So you can just say superbase.functions.invoke, the name of the function, and the second parameter takes in the parameters that you want to pass to your function. And over time, we are planning to add more parameters here, like the uh, timeout and abort signal and so on. And we are trying to keep this as similar as we reasonably can to the fetch options. So if you have used the browser fetch before, this object should be pretty similar to what you use in fetch. And we are also trying to keep the DX similar to our other client libraries as much as possible. So again, by default, we don't throw an error, we return an error, which you can also override using option in the constructor. And just to go over a bit about our architecture and how we try to keep the code starts to a minimum. So when a user makes a request, the first component that it hits is called a relay. This relay is a globally distributed server, which takes information from the metadata store to decide what to do with the request. The metadata store is also globally distributed key value store and it gets information like the JWTT secret and so on. And it validates whether the request is allowed, if the JWT secret is valid. And if it is, then it passes the request onto Dino deploy, which is the hosted platform that Dino manages for us. And the function executes in Dino isolates. And if Dino does not have the latest version of the function, or if it's a new function, then it pings Superbase again to get the latest version of the function and Superbase uses a different component called a function store where all the function definitions are stored with the version information and then it's passed on to Dino. And most of the times if Dino has the function information, it won't be a cold start and we have tried to optimize the hot path as much as possible. Each of the components in the hot path, the relay, the metadata store is highly optimized to make sure that the time to invoke a function is as less as possible. A bit about what's next. A lot of users have been asking us for ways to run their functions on a fixed schedule, like a cron job. So we are planning to add support for that. We are also planning to add support to Superbase Studio, which is the self-hosted dashboard for Superbase and the, a way for you to self-host multiple functions at the same time. And we uh, have a few more ideas on how to optimize cold start times even further. And Dino has a way for you to execute VASM binaries inside the Dino runtime. We are planning to expose that to users so that you can write your functions not just in Dino, but also in any language that can compile down to VASM. We are also planning to expose the Dino permission model so you can be way more granular in what permissions that your function has. So you can restrict what environment variables the function has access to and also what domains that it can connect to when it's running. We are also planning to make JWT verification optional so that you don't need a valid JWT when invoking the function you might want to handle the authentication inside the function itself. And this also makes it easy for you to make Superbase functions run as a webhook. For example, you uh, after this feature is implemented, you would be able to connect your Superbase function to Stripe webhooks and process changes in your Stripe account inside your Superbase function. Now, that's it from me. This is a link that you can use to get started with Superbase functions. You can reach me online at my email here or on Twitter at everconfusedguy and I'll be around to answer any questions. Thanks for having me.